Chapter 19, The Anatomy of the Points Requiring Prudent Manipulations. Forbidden points are discussed in many Chinese classical medical works. With the development of modern anatomy, we are able to gain a better understanding of the points which are forbidden to needle. After a thorough study of some points which require prudent manipulation, we get a better idea of the tissues and anatomical structures at and around the point locations. This, in turn, helps us to master the correct method for needling manipulation and also enables us to effectively prevent acupuncture actions. First of all, we need to have an idea about some commonly used planes and the sections in human anatomy. Take a human model as an example. The vertical plane which divides the body into right and left sides is called the sagittal section. The plane which divides the body into anterior and posterior portions is called the coronal section. The horizontal plane, which divides the body into upper and lower sections, is called the transverse section. This is the section which is often used in the study of acupuncture. As people are different in terms of age, sex, and weight, the depth of needle insertion also needs to be different. As a general practice, the body ratio measurement, namely taking the finger as a measuring unit, is regarded as the standard. Based on the studies of the forbidden points discussed in the ancient medical works and research on modern anatomy, we would like to introduce to you region by region the following points which require prudent manipulation. The head is where the central nervous system is located. During the long period of evolution, the brain has been packed in a skeletal structure, but this protection is not complete. There are still several passageways through the skull for nerves, vessels, and attached tissues to pass. Inserting the needle too deeply may cause it to go into the foramens and fissures, causing injury to the central nervous system or even death. The weight of the brain is only 2% of the whole body weight. Yet, owing to its high rate of metabolism, the volume of blood it requires takes up to 20%. Of the body's total blood supply. Therefore, the blood vessels in the head region are abundant. The following is a detailed instruction to the anatomy of each point. Jing Ming. Jing Ming is located in the depression superior to the inner canthus. The indications are red, swollen, and painful eye, superficial visual obstruction, and lacrimation from wind effects. Now let's look at the transverse section of Jing Ming and study its tissue construction. The skin in this area is quite thin. The loose subcutaneous layer is marked by abundant blood vessels. An inappropriate needle insertion may cause a hematoma and black and blue eyes. The function of the avicularis oculi, which is located under the upper and lower eyelid, is to close the rima papabrum. Medial to the insertion direction is the medial wall of the orbit. There are bone holes for blood vessels to pass through. Insertion into the blood vessels in those holes by mistake will cause bleeding. Just next to the orbital plate of the ethmoid bone is the rectus medialis muscle. Needling this muscle will help correct outward lacrimal Lateral to the insertion direction is the eyeball. The greatest diameter from left to right is called the equator of the eyeball, where the sclera is thinnest. If the needle is inserted obliquely outward, it is likely to injure the eyeball. The tissue filling in the space around the eyeball, eye muscles, and the periosteum of the orbit are the corpus adiposum orbitae. 
They are mainly fat tissues. When you insert the needle into this section, you will feel a sense of placidity. The optic nerve goes backwards in the optic nerve duct, enters into the skull fossa, and connects with the chasm opticum. The superior orbit fissure is a fairly large passageway between the orbital cavity and the medial skull fossa. If the needle is inserted too deeply, it would penetrate the superior orbital fissure and injure the anterior aspect of the temporal lobe. The result is serious. Because the subcutaneous tissue is flaccid, the blood vessels are abundant around Qingming. We suggest inserting the needle with both hands. First locate the point using one hand to gently push the eyeball to the lateral side. Puncture slowly and perpendicularly with the other hand. Don't lift, thrust, or twist the needle. Avoid inserting the needle obliquely to the lateral side or close to the eyeball, for it is likely to injure the eyeball. Control the depth of needle insertion. If the needle goes deeper than 1.8 sun perpendicularly, it will injure the optic nerve. The patient may experience a sudden surge of sparks dancing in front of his eyes, which is accompanied by headache and dizziness. If the needle is inserted too much to the lateral posterior aspect, and if it goes deeper than 2 sun, then the needle should pass through the superior orbital fissure, injuring the brain and its blood vessels and causing and cephalorrhagia, and even death. Cheng Qi. When the eyes look straight forward, the point is directly below the pupil, between the eyeball and the infraorbital ridge. The main indications are red, swollen, and painful eyes, lacrimation, deterioration of vision, etc. By adopting the transverse section, we can see that its construction is similar to Qingming. There are flaccid subcutaneous tissue and blood vessels around the point. Underneath are orbicularis oris muscles, inferior oblique and inferior rectus muscles. When the needle enters into the muscle, the patient will have a sense of soreness, distension, or heaviness. The infraorbitalis nerve and the infraorbital arteries go through the infraorbitalis succulus. The ophthalmic arteries are located at the lateral side of the optic nerve. The arteries and nerves go together into the skull cavity. Excessive exertion of cheng qi would increase the possibility of injuring the ophthalmic arteries. The needling method is just like that of Jingming. Use both hands to approach this point. Puncture perpendicularly and slowly along the infraorbital ridge. Do not lift, thrust, or twist the needle. Generally, if you keep the needle close to the infraorbital ridge, it is unlikely to injure the eyeball. The depth of insertion should be controlled within 1.5 tun so that the ophthalmic arteries won't be hurt. It will be very dangerous if the needle goes too deep. It may hurt the superior orbital fissure and some deeper structure. To treat the cramping and spasm of the orbicularis oculi muscle, we can insert the needle first to the subcutaneous layer of the palpebrum at Cheng Qi, and then insert the needle transversely toward the angulus oculi medialis along the skin. Is three swim below Cheng Qi in the depression of the infraorbital forming. The symptoms are red, swollen, and painful eye, conjunctivitis, pterygium, or dizziness. The point is located at the cross point of the lower part of the orbicularis oculi muscle fiber and the beginning part of the levator labi mu superior muscle fiber. Underneath that is the levator angulari muscle. The muscles mentioned above are all facial expression muscles. Therefore, 
Excessive insertion would cause the needle to pierce into the infraorbital duct and injure the blood vessels there. It is advisable to needle sibai perpendicularly about 0.2 to 0.3 tun. Avoid excessive insertion unless it is used to treat facial muscle cramping, in which case the needle should be inserted towards the inferior aspect. All the points mentioned above are located around the area close to the eyeball. It is not advisable to apply direct moxibustion at these points. The point is level with the tip of the Adam's apple. Just on the anterior border of the sternocleoid mastoid muscle, 1.5 tun from the Adam's apple. Indications include asthma, goiter, sore throat, dizziness, etc. Chen Jiu Jia Yijin recorded that it is not advisable to apply moxibustion to this point, and that excessive insertion exceeding 0.4 tun can be lethal. Now let's look at a transverse section of the point. The sheath of the cervical artery is covered by the sternocleoid mastoid muscle. At the front medial side of the artery sheath is located the carotis communis artery. At the rear lateral side, there is the jugularis internal vein. The vagus nerves are at the posterior part between the artery and the vein. The carotis communis artery is the biggest artery of the neck. Its vessel wall is sturdy and thick. There would be a glutinous sensation if it is punctured by mistake. A throbbing sensation would also occur. At the root of the internal carotid artery is a bowel receptor. Any stimulation would bring about the acceleration of heartbeat, contraction of blood vessels, as well as a rising of blood pressure. The vagus nerve contains the parasympathetic nerve fibers which take charge of the heart activity. When it is stimulated, it will depress heart activity and so seriously as to slow down the heartbeat, thus causing the coronary artery to contract. The patient will complain of palpitation, depression, chest contraction together with a pale face. These signal a serious condition. The key point in manipulating the point is to avoid needling toward the lateral side, going upward with too much exertion or with large amplitude. Before inserting the needle, feel the pulse of the carotid communis artery first, keeping clear of the artery. Then puncture perpendicularly at its anterior part, a little closer to the medial side. The depth should be controlled within 0.5 to 0.8 tun, no more than one tun. Pay close attention to the needling sensation to avoid injuring the arteries. The anatomical construction and characteristics are clearly shown in this model. This is the common carotid artery, and that is the internal jugular vein. The vagus nerve is located at the posterior part between the artery and the vein. When inserting the needle, avoid needling toward the lateral side in order not to pierce through the internal jugular vein, hurting the vagus nerve and causing serious injuries. This is the common carotid artery. Puncturing it by mistake would cause throbbing sensation and change of blood pressure. It is advisable to pay particular attention when treating those patients who have heart disease.
Now, let's look at the points located on the nape and back. Feng Fu. The patient sits with the head slightly flexed. The point is located one twin above the midpoint of the posterior hairline, directly below the external occipital protuberance. In the depression between the trapezius muscle of both sides, indications are insanity, hysteria, post-apoplexia aphasia, and hemophilia. Adopt the transverse section of the point. We can then see that the skin here is comparatively thick. Even in this point would generate a tenacious sensation. The subcutaneous tissue is also rich and is made up of plastic connective tissue. When the needle goes to this level, less resistance and a sense of softness will be felt as compared to the skin layer. Deeper inside, there is a ligament nuclei. It is made up of dense connective tissue, with tissue fibers closely packed one after the other. More resistance, tenacious or hardness, will be felt here while needling. Do you not pierce through the ligament when needling the point? Since superior and posterior to the ligament lie membrana, alteno, occipitalis posterior, duramatal spinalis, and medulla oblongata successively. The medulla oblongata is actually the lower part of the brain stem. Inside the stem, there are several pairs of cranial nerve nuclei, ascending or descending pathways, and many regulation centers, such as the pneumotaxis center, vomiting center, vasomotor center, etc. The accident shown at the beginning of this video is a result of the injury of the medulla oblongata by excessive insertion. So the depth of the insertion should be controlled within 1.5 ton. When the needle gets to the membrana atlanta occipitalis posterior, an increased sense of resistance can be felt. As the needle goes deeper into the cavatus cybaric nodialis, a sense of emptiness of penetration can be felt. When the needle enters into the medulla oblongata, the needle sensation is soft. Meanwhile, the patient feels an electric-like sensation, which will be followed by disordered mental activity. The patient will display such symptoms as rigid neck, dizziness, Blurring of vision, palpitation, perspiration, or vomiting. These are the manifestations of bleeding of the medulla oblongata. When this occurs, withdraw the needle at once and give the patient emergency treatment. Any delay would cause death. It is much safer to insert the needle towards the Adam's apple or the protuberantia mentalis. Do not insert the needle to the lateral side, for that would injure the vertebralis artery. When this occurs, you will feel the pulsation of the needle. You should withdraw the needle and press the point for a few minutes. If it is accompanied by bleeding of the artery, you can also apply a cold pad to the region to help stop the bleeding. Meanwhile, observe the patient closely and see if there's any headache, dizziness, or lowering of blood pressure. Be cautious at all times. Feng Shi. Feng Shi is located at the lateral side of the nape, in the depression between the upper portion of the sternocleid mastoid muscle and the trapezius muscle, at the same level with Feng Shi. Indications are headache, vertigo, pain, and stiffness of the neck, blurred vision, paralysis, etc. Its anatomical construction is similar to that of Feng Shi. There are relatively thick skin and subcutaneous tissue. Underneath is a trapezius muscle, splenius capitis muscle, and the semispinalis capitis muscle. When the needle passes through these muscles, less resistance and tenacity will be met than when it passes through the skin. Under the muscle, there is a suboccipital triangle filled with blood vessels, nerves, fat, and connective tissue. Therefore, as the needle enters this layer, 
a soft feeling with less resistance will be felt. Penetrating this section is not advisable. Posterior to this layer and toward the lateral side of the atlantoaxillar joints and the vertebral vessel. If the needle goes deeper than 1.5 cm, it will puncture the medulla oblongata and vertebral vessel. So the depth of insertion should be controlled within 1.2 cm. The correct insertion direction should be facing the atlantoaxillar joint on the same side. Do not needle towards the anglus oculi lateralis of the opposite side, since the medulla oblongata lies just beneath that in that direction. If the needle is inserted toward the anglus oculi medialis of the same side, it will be facing toward the vertebral vessel of that same side. Therefore, never manipulate the needle with a large amplitude in order to avoid injuring the vertebral vessels and causing serious results. Let the patient sit with the head in flexion. The point is in the depression, 0.5 cm directly above the midpoint of the posterior hairline. Indications are stiffness of the tongue, aphasia, sudden hoarseness of the voice, headache, rigidity of the neck, hysteria, vomiting, etc. Looking at a transverse section of the point, you can see that its construction is similar to that of Feng Fu. 1.5 tun beneath the skin, there is a spinal cord, the lower extension of the mandula oblongata. Surrounding it is mainly the vertebral duct. Pay attention to the depth and direction here when needling. Excessive insertion will make the needle pass through the crevice and injure the spinal cord. As is shown here, the blue portion is the membrana atlanto occipitalis posterior. In the deeper layer are the cerebellum and medulla oblongata. Excessive insertion will hurt the medulla oblongata or the spinal cord. When puncturing this point, insert the needle slowly towards the mandibular. Depth should be controlled within 1.5 tun. Keep in mind that in order to avoid injuring the cerebellum, never insert the needle upward. This is the correct direction for manipulation of the Be sure not to insert the needle too deeply. The patient with a serious injury of the spinal cord would show the signs and symptoms of capitis, subarachnoidea, and symptoms related to spinal cord injury such as serious headache, vomiting, or even malfunction of the extremities. At this time, close observation as well as emergency treatment are required. Up to now, we have introduced the points of the head and neck regions, which require prudent manipulation. Now let's take a look at the points of the chest and back regions. The 
肺部。In the chest cavity, there are some important organs such as the heart and lungs. The thoracic wall, from superficial to interior, can be divided into the following: skin, subcutaneous tissue, muscle, ostostal, soft tissues filling the intercostal space, and peripheral pleura. 胸膜脏层 ，the parietal pleura together with the visceral pleura form the pleural cavity, which has a negative pressure. Because of this fact, the intercostal muscle and the diaphragm can be empowered to keep normal respiration. Let's take a look at a transverse section of the chest. 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 Causing a collapsed lung, coughing, a choking feeling, and chest pain would occur. If the condition is more serious, the patient will develop progressive dyspnea and cyanosis in a short time. Worsening of this condition of collapsed lung would cause the mediastinum to move to the opposite side and result in palpitation, hypotension, or even coma. Now let's select a few representative points of this region and address them one by one. Tiantu. Sitting and facing upward, the point is in the suprasternal fossa, 0.5 to 1 above the center of the incisura jugularis. Indications are cough, asthma, difficulty in swallowing, sore throat, inflapus, hysterics, etc. Adopting the sagittal section, you can see the anatomical constructions as follows. The skin, the subcutaneous tissue, then the linea alba of the neck, which is interweaved by the deep cervical fascia that covers the infrahyoida muscles. When the needle is inserted into this layer, a tenacious sense will be felt. Piercing through the linea alba of the neck, the needle enters into the crevice in front of the trachea. The needling sensation here is of emptiness. This is a required depth of shallow insertion. Under the crevice there lies the trachea. The red part shown here in the trachea is the mucous membrane of the trachea. If you puncture the point perpendicularly over 0.5 tun, the needle will meet the trachea. The needling sensation is tenacious when the needle is inserted into the ligamentia anorelia. If the needle is inserted obliquely downward, it would increase the possibility of injuring the branches of the arcus aorta and the arcus aorta itself. If the needle is inserted too deeply towards the angular sternum, the frontier of the lung is liable to be hurt, especially when the needle tip inclines sideways or when treating pneumonic stasia patients. There are two commonly used insertion methods for needling Tiantu. 
通常不只有严重后果。generally，it's Since the needle is inserted at the crevice in front of the trachea, the needle sensation is rather empty and soft. The patient will have a tense feeling around the throat. Never insert the needle too deeply, for it might injure the artery carotis communis. Neither should we insert the needle interiorly toward the manibrum sternum or obliquely toward either side, or it would cause injury to lung tissue, which would result in progressive hip pain. Clinically, if the patient starts to feel it is more and more difficult to breathe, the practitioner should check to see if the patient has a collapsed lung and provide necessary emergency treatment. Rugen. When the patient adopts a supine position, the point is located in the fifth intercostal space, directly below the nipple. Indications are cough, asthma, pain in the chest, mastitis, insufficient lactation, etc. In a transverse section, we can see that there are thick, honeycomb-like subcutaneous tissue, as well as mammoth tissue if it is a female. Interiorly, there lie the pectoralis major muscle, the oscostal, the intercostal external muscle, the intercostal internal muscle, the lumbar and pleural visceralis. The greatest depth of insertion cannot penetrate as far as the intercostal internal muscle. If the needle goes any deeper, the lung will then be hurt. Since the lung is located at this depth, and the thoracic wall is rather thin, it is advisable to puncture horizontally instead of perpendicularly. It is safer to keep the needle angle at about 25 degrees to the skin, and keep it the depth to about 0.5 to 1 twin. Pay careful attention to the depth and direction when needling points on the chest and back. Such malpractice as injuring the lung is a serious matter. The patient adopts a prone position. The point is 1.5 to lateral to the level of the lower border of the spinous process of the fifth thoracic vertebra. Indications are mania, epilepsy, palpitation, loss of memory, nocturnal emission, panic, cough, pain in the chest and back. By looking at the transverse section of the point area, we can see the relatively thick skin with a thin layer of subcutaneous tissue, interior to which lie the muscles. Between the oscostals, there are the levatoris costera muscles and the ligaments intercostals and turni. The green area is the fascia thoracic and the costal pleura. Deep inside is the lung. An excessively deep penetration could hurt the lung. Since the lung lies under the point, 
The depth of the perpendicular puncture should be controlled within one twin, even though the thoracic wall is thick. The safest direction to insert the needle would be toward the vertebra. Owning to the unique shape of the thoracic cavity, we can see that the possibility of injuring the lung by inserting the needle obliquely to the lateral side is much larger than that of the perpendicular insertion. Therefore, it is forbidden to needle toward the lateral side. Jiaji. And after much research, Huatua realized that the ancient method of locating Jiaji points, putting them 1.5 tons from the center of the vertebral column, is likely to cause injury if the insertion depth is not controlled carefully. From his own clinical experience, he was able to develop a new method in locating the points, which specifies that the points should be 0.5 tons lateral to the vertebral column on both sides. When the patient adopts the prone position, the jiaji points are a group of 34 points located on both sides of the spinal column, 0.5 to in lateral to the lower border of each spinous process. They run from the first thoracic vertebra to the fifth lumbar vertebra. On a transverse section of the chest, we can see that the former method of locating the points, 1.5 tons lateral to the spinal column, is more likely to injure the lung. The Huatua Jiaji points lie closer to the truncus hepaticus on both sides of the spinal column. Adopting this method is not only safer, but also more effective. There are a wide range of indications with these points. Needling perpendicularly, 0.3 to 0.5 tun, or a cap with a plumb box and needle. Having an intimate knowledge of the sectional construction of each point can help us to master the correct manipulation method of acupuncture, avoid accidents, and achieve better results. Thank you.